very happy and uh, good evening. Welcome back to the posting session. I'm not speaking now, don't worry. I'm getting the hand. So I'm quickly here to introduce the next speaker. And I, I wanted to introduce the speaker in person uh, because he's just not a speaker, he's a wonderful human being and my mentor. And I always believe that, I'm sure he's, uh, give, he's one of the uh, you know, guiding, uh, he gives a lot of inputs in terms of these uh, words of technology, analytics and to the branch. So I will take a quick minute to introduce Rafiq sir. So CA Abdul Rafiq is a fellow member of the institute and passed the CA final in 1985 and CSA exam in June 1995 and DSA of course. Uh, he has been in 30 years in the profession and various roles of CFO, CIO, IT implementer and IT consultant. And uh, more importantly sir has special interest in data analytics and COVID and one of the expert review, reviewers of Isaka guidance notes as well. So on that brief note, I'll quickly uh, give the mic to Rafi sir. Before I do that, may I quickly request our member to give a small floor to okay, to welcome Rafi sir. Thank you. Over to you sir. Good evening. Good evening sir. Okay, I'm back. I'm delighted to be here, back again. But I'm reminded that last year when we held the Information Technology Summit, we had a very good friend and mentor, Babu Jandra, and he's no longer with us. I remember every time, maybe we would have gone to hundreds of seminars and conferences. And uh, in fact, last month I dreamt that uh, both of us were going in a conference in an entire flight. And we were in the train to catch the flight. And when I was just about to get off from the train to go to the airport, I found I had not got my uh, passport. So Babu Jandra went away, but I had to come back because I did not have the passport or the visa. So it looked like maybe it just took a ton of time. I was just thinking, uh, if you look at our, from a journey from birth to death, uh, we come into the world vertical, and after some time we learn to become, uh, become horizontal, and over a period of time we learn to become vertical and we spend the time being vertical and again we gradually become horizontal and then horizontal we go. So from earth we come and from the earth we go. But what is important is we did not decide when you are going to come and we cannot decide when we are going to go. The only time we have in our control is the time with us which is now because we don't know whether we are going to be here tomorrow. <coughs> with this background I want to dedicate this presentation to my friend Babu Jandran. And you always used to constantly tell me that uh, that I speak a lot. He said, uh, don't speak too much. Show the software, show the demo, show the techniques. And I decided to change. And this time I'm going to speak very little. Bit. Let's say we have 40 minutes, probably I'll just speak for about 10 minutes. And then I want to take you through a journey of uh, different techniques of how you can use data database. Okay? So the best way to experience technology to see the magic of technology. That's what I thought we can do. And I think this conference is actually titled Tantragna. So I'll just look at what is Tantragna means. We talk about techniques, practices, etc. And Dana means knowledge. And that chartered accountants, we are all supposed to be Jnanis. And we are supposed to know how to apply the Jnana. And the only field in which our Jnana is not good enough is in the domain of information technology. Because still something which doesn't seem to attract us doesn't seem to be even that I think seen right at the student stage. With a lot of great difficulty we brought in information technology into the uh, CA student syllabus. And with uh, uh, quite a lot of ease they actually reported from the CA syllabus. So information technology is something which is uh, not really, uh, we are not very friendly with C, uh, information technology. But although we are pushed to use information technology. Broadly I am going to uh, talk about four topics, four broad areas. What is data analytics? There are six key questions. Most of you would have talked about uh, this right from the morning, would have heard about the importance of data analytics. And most of you, I am sure, you are well conversant or you could be using data analytics in your own way. And the second thing is uh, compliance and assurance. What is the need? You know that we have been pushed to use technology in most of the compliance and assurance assignments because of e filing, e governance, and various other things. The government is really doing this. So whether you accept or not, knowingly or unknowingly, you have to accept tech, uh, use information technology for online filing of report, returns, everything you have to do online. So you have to know technology to that, to that extent. And what I would like to spend most of the time is on the part 3 
which is the demo of different techniques. And that's why we anticipated some issues. Uh, Narasimhan told me in the morning that some issue of technology issues. So I came with a backup laptop and now it seems to be okay. Let's see how the best we can resolve this. Because very particular that uh, I want to show you the technique so that you can experience, we can actually walk through some of the examples. And the last part is, okay, all that we have heard is GAN. What next? Like, uh, long back you remember, uh, and the, when the battle of Mahabharata, when Arjuna asked Krishna to take him to the midst of the battle field, uh, where the armies were facing each other, and he asked him, can you stop so that I can survey the army people who are fighting with me? And uh, he stood there, and then he became despondent. He left his arm and uh, bow and arrow and said, I cannot fight. There is a, uh, what is that? This particular scenario has got different dimensions. Far, far away in the palace, Sanjaya is sitting with Dhritarashtra. And Sanjaya has been gifted with the Divya Shakti. He can see what's happening in the battlefield. And Dhritarashtra is very keen to know what's happening in the battlefield because he is listening with one perspective that his son should win the battle. Okay. Now Sanjaya is communicating what is happening in the battlefield. Okay. Now if you look at this, Krishna is giving the Gyan through the Bhagavad Gita and now there are three listeners, three or four listeners. Four the listeners, we have got Dhritarashtra who is listening from Sanjay, we have got Sanjay who is listening to uh, Krishna and Arjuna and we have here Arjuna. And we also have Krishna who is listening to Arjuna because it is a two-way collaboration. <coughs> so there are four people listening. And how many people are speaking? Dhritarashtra in the whole Bhagavad Gita speaks, speaks only one sentence. Okay. Sanjay intermittently he speaks, at the end of it also he speaks. <coughs> And Arjuna keeps on asking questions at different levels. And Krishna is the one who keeps on listening to the questions, also gives him the gyan. So at the end of the uh, Gita, 18 chapters, Arjuna says, my mind is clear, I am ready to fight. Okay. Now I just want to ask you one question. In this particular dimension, there are four listeners. What is the perspective from which each of them are listening? So if you look at Arjuna, what is the perspective from which he is listening? He, what type of a listener would you say he is? He is an active listener. He is listening so that he can act. Okay. Now if you look at uh, Sanjay, what type of a listener is he? He is only listener for, he is not listening to supply. He is listening to communicate to Dhritarashtra. Now Dhritarashtra, what type of a listener is he? He is an aggressive listener. He is not interested in listening. He wants to listen to only what he wants. Are my sons winning the battlefield? Other than that, all the gas water Krishna gives goes above him. Now the only question to you before I start the presentation is what type of a listener are you as far as information technology is concerned? <laughs> you are Arjuna. Great. So if you are Arjuna then I am ready. I am not a Krishna. Okay. But we are ready to start the journey. Let us get started. <coughs> the first thing, anything you want to learn, the same you need to ask the same questions. The same thing you need to ask about the data analysis. What is data analytics? Why you need data analytics? How you need to use data analytics? I would like to focus more on how. When, where, all these things most of you already know. What is data analytics? If you have to take the shortest definition, this is what it is. Inferring insight from information. That is what data analytics is all about. Why do you need data analytics? The fundamental of this one is most of you think Excel is a data analytics. Excel is an excellent tool. But as a CA you should know that there are various tools and you should know what tool to use when. There is a friend of mine in Delhi who keeps on, who is an expert in Excel. He gives 3D training on Excel, conducted by the age group. And he says, and he also is supposed to give data analysis. He says, sir, my Excel can dikha ta hon, we look up dikha ta hon, dikha ta hon, filter, uh, private table, like that he shows so many things. And there are so many places where you have to do complex things and he shows 15 minutes, he does all the circles and shows them. Partment said, how the channel is very good, you can do so many things. Then after that you use the data analytics software and in three clicks it shows the result. Then you said, see this is the power of data analytics. Excel was not designed from the perspective of audit. So it can be used to a great extent. But it should do that much more powerful than that. And then he says the example. I will tell you, see, first there was another thing. Another start from another pipe down there, so start from there. Now the case is start from there. And press the button, you can do. Now the other thing is that there was a feature there. There was a feature there. Okay, here we go, but how do we go? What are the features available in Amazon and let's say BMW or any other new car? And that's the difference between Excel and data and software. Now, do you want to still use Amazon? Ask him, so it depends on what you want to use. Okay? 
So there is no doubt that data analytics software has got various features. Whether you use data analytics software or not, that's not the problem issue. What I want you to do is learn the perspective of how you can do data analytics with the data. So this is a some slides which I borrowed from a friend who is in Chennai, is a MCA who provides services exclusive data analytics. And he says this is the type of analytic services he provides in revenue services. He can do demographic analysis, customer segmentation, profiling, sentiment analysis. All these are, these are different types of he specializes only in data analytics using Excel data analytics software. And how to use data analytics? This is what it said. Primarily, what is what you can identify the bottleneck requirements. Now, the data analytics can be used from different perspectives. Now, you can use it for compliance and assurance, which is what I am going to focus on. He uses it from point of the management. How can I improve services to customers? There is an entity which has got a lot of amount of data, but they don't know they have some issues or problem statement. How can I solve their problems? That's where he brings in the perspective. Understand the data sources, collect the data, extract, load, and transform the data as required. Query a data profile and analyze and come to a conclusion. This is a, some examples of how data analytics would be used. So I just want to bring this slide rather than bring the normal slide to just give you a perspective that data analytics is a special science, is a special expertise which most of us can learn very fast. Now the question is, before we start, we should know where are we headed in using IT. This is a famous story, Alice in Wonderland, you must have read long back. Where Alice came to a particular point, asked the cat, where does this road lead to? And uh, the cat asked, where do you want to go? Uh, she said, I'm not sure. Then he says, it doesn't make a difference. You can take any road. So in the case of information technology, when Sachi talked about digital strategy, I think we need to ask the same question. Where do you want to be three years from now, five years from now, one year from now? And can you use information technology as a driver of making the transformation of that particular change? And this is why it's summit service and name that digital transformation. We are not looking at transition, we are looking at transformation. How can we transform the way we provide our services, enhance productivity? That's what we need to look at. All of us though, I think most of us were above 50 or around that. You know that when you wanted to audit, we used to be get various types of colors of pencils. I also started with that. Okay. And different uh, different pencils were used for different purposes, there are different types of things. Now the question is, although 20 years have passed, 25 years have passed. Is our approach still in the pencil era? Okay. So, and are we ready to move from ticks to clicks? This is what is important. When the data which is available in manual form has shifted from physical format to digital format, we should learn how to make change in the mindset. And this is where you need to remember now we are all talking about digital businesses. And they require a digital platform. So, if you look at compliance and assurance, I've already said. Now this is the most often repeated statement, data is the new oil. Now the question is for whom? Is it the new oil for you? Is it running the engine for you? Is it running your car? No. You are only feeding the data by putting information on Facebook and Google search everything. So whatever data you are creating is for somebody else to make money. But you have the most amount of extensive amount of data with you. Can you do leverage that particular data? Do you know the power of the data which you have? So also, we are custodian for the data which the client has reposed with us. Are we protecting the right data? So now let's come to the demo. I will set 10 minutes. Within that, I have completed the first two parts where I want to focus mostly, uh, where I want to give a brief overview. Now let's look at some of the demo of the audit test. What type of test can be performed? So this time I decided I think I'm just going to focus on some specific tests. I have some sample data which I'm going to share, show you. Some of the data is, un uh, most of the data is anonymized. Okay. So these are practical cases which are done, okay. And these are only some of the cases. I am not in regular practice. I do only consulting on data analytics and also develop data analytics software. Probably I spent more than 10 years on developing data analytics software. Let's get started with this. Most of you know about this. This is the, uh, this one of my friend who is in Dubai who started a business in India. Uh, he started somewhere in 2008 and now he got noticed from the Bank department for 2014, 2013, 14, and 2014, 15 that he has not filed the C form. There's so much of death shit, and then uh, his CA didn't appear for the case. or there's some communication gap. They put a heavy fine on him. So one of the things I said, using data analytics will help him to resolve and find out issues where C form received, where the cases C form is not received. So I thought I'll just show you two cases where one in using Excel itself you can do it. Okay. Now if you look at this data, what does this data contain? 
This data contains, if you are, some of you are familiar with Excel, this is the data of C forms which has been downloaded from the web website. Okay. Now if you go to the next one, ah, this is the C form from the web website. Now this is for each of the years we got the data. Now this is the data, we used the formula using data analytics, you can also use the pivot table for this. We want to say what are the C forms which are available online, for what are the how many forms that have been received for each of the years. Uh, this is how we are able to do, using pivot table we can do, or I will also show you how we can do using data analytics software. So based on this we got a clear idea, ok for example the total turnover as per the sales register for the last 5 years. So instead of taking the 2 years for which the notice has been received, I said let's attack all the 5 years so that we get all the things up to date. So we said the total year turnover is about 498 lakhs. The total C form is got about 380 lakhs. So we think that the shortfall of 118 lakhs. Now the biggest problem is to find out who are the parties who are not given the C form, follow up and collect them and then follow up with the party and get this one. Uh, get the C forms and file. So these are all the C forms. So then we segregate into year wise 13, 14 and 15, 14, 15 and then we did the analysis. Okay, now let me Go to the specific case. Okay, now let me open this file which I want to analyze. So I'll first start with the Okay, let's start with the sample demo. Now if you see, I thought we will pick up this particular cases. First case, I have got about 25 cases, let's see how many we can cover in this uh, time. Okay, these are the audit objectives and the audit tests. Okay, first thing I have got this data, now this particular NGO, for which we did them another one through one of our friend. Uh, so this data, I have sanitized so that we are not able to know who it is, this is a for foreign NGO, they have used the soft software, software. Okay, based on that we called out this data, this data is for the period, 1st April to 30th September 2019. Okay. Now they wanted us to convert this data into Excel uh, tally. Before converting into Tela, we have we have this automated solution which they convert the data from Excel into tally. Okay. But the data has to be validated and it showed whether everything is correct and complete. Okay. So the first thing is I need to get an overview of the data. How to get an overview of the data in Excel? How can you get an overview of the data in Excel? You want, what does that mean by overview? I need to know the count, I need to know the sum, then I can filter and pick the data, I can apply the pivot table, like that I can do various analysis and get an overview of the data. Okay. Now this is an example of a data analytics software, I will show you how you can do the data analytics, how you can get an overview in a few clicks. Here I then go to column statistics. Okay. Now if you see here, this has column statistics for mnemonic, date and character data. So I am just going to say that I want for all mnemonic statistics, I want only for the amount because mnemonic serial number doesn't make a difference. Okay. There is a problem here. Okay. The OK button is coming. Hmm? Yeah. OK button is here.
automatically break and uh, in this one. Yeah. Yeah. See, this also shows that nobody is an expert in technology. I mean, there are so many things out there, but there are so many things I don't know. Yeah. 
Now, if you see, you got the data here. For serial number, it tells me for each of them, for serial number, how many valid cells are there, how many blank cells are there. Like you see, for among, there are 378 blank cells. Most of the time, there are no blank cells. At one glance, I know, okay, what is the validity of the data, whether all the fields are valid. Similarly, if I go to the one more thing called row properties. Now this tells me for each type of data, okay, what the data is available and I can navigate to that particular data quickly. For example, I want to go to, let's say I want to see the details of 800th row. I can directly, it shows me the values for each of that particular value, uh, that particular row directly. So it means I can directly go, for example, I got Excel sheet with got 20 columns. I can show this, I can see this horizontally for each of the values. Let me see whether I can do the statistics because I want to show statistics for the date field. Now I am coming to the date field. Okay, so for the date field it has got so much of statistics. Okay, I say okay. See, not like they say, no, it's not about the data that you have, it's what you can do with that data. Now just look at it, I just do it with two clicks. With that, let's look at the type of information I can get from the data. What is that I expect to get? I expect to get the total sales month-wise for each of the months and also sales day-wise. Now it shows 86008 one voucher. 
In one voucher, he has passed 92 entries. Why need to do that? I want to see the details. I just double click on this. I should be able to get to know all the 92 entries which has passed. Okay, this pertains to professional, this one or other. This could be pertaining to salary and so many other deductions. So like that, I can get that information. Pertaining. So with this, what is the test we perform? We found out the debit and the credit tally. Now, if you are doing Excel, how do you do this? As I said, we can use the pivot table, but it has its own nuances. Verify the odd transaction entered her values or zero. This we already seen in statistics. We have seen whether the transaction is a zero. Analyze number of transactions as per accounts or ledger name to identify maximum or minimum number of transactions. That also we have seen through this itself. You know, for each of the vouchers, what are the maximum and minimum number of transactions? Identify and group transactions as per the cost category in the cost center. Now, if you look at the data, I got some transactions which have got the cost category. There are a few transactions which don't have the cost category. I want to know from each cost category in cost center what the amount which has been entered. Okay, so let's perform. I use the same function. Now, just look at this. I am going to do it in two ways. I am going to select the cost category, cost center. What is the total I want? I want the amount. Okay. And I have to click. Okay. So what does it give me? For cost category, it tells me for each cost category, what is it? And this will be copied in Excel because there are two sheets. This will be Excel, uh, it will create two sheets in Excel. Now if you see here, this is the cost center. For cost center, what is the number of transactions? Which means out of the 9,157 transactions we saw, there are 4,056 which have got no cost center. Okay, similarly if you see here, now I just want to do this, I can do this Excel itself. I can see the total number of entries passed for each cost category. Same way I want to do based on the cost center. This for the cost center. On the right side, okay, I selected only huh, this one more for the cost category. Okay, same way. I can just say I want to see now there are 428 which are blank. Now you see the one sponsorship that was about 1099 entries based on this. So I'm going to get a good perspective of this. Now it did classify based on each of this category. Now what I would like to do is I want to know within cost category inside that you got a cost center. I want to group it based on that. Can we do it? Now in this case, same function with a small change I want to do. Okay, so here I'm going to this one. I want based on the cost center, and I want it group by the cost category. Okay, now see the difference in the output, and I want sum of the amount. <laughs> now this should be able to tell me give the data for each cost category and inside that cost center. Now if you see here the data, in this case what does it show? Classified cost center. There are so many cases where cost category is there but cost center is not there. Okay, these are cases, there are about 3810 entries where both cost category and cost center are not there. Okay, now if you look at the places here, in this case, so there are so many places where the Cost category center itself is not there, which means one of them is only available. Cost category is available or only cost center is available. Now in this case, you tell me whether I can pass this entry in tally. No, it's not possible to take because if you want to pass entry for cost category and cost center in tally, I need to have both, otherwise I can't pass the entry. Okay, now let's look at this one. This we have seen. Now let's see, I want to know as per each transaction type, what are the number of entries which are passed? How do I do that? Now I think we should be experts by now. I'm just doing one function. I just picked up classify. Okay. So what is that I wanted? I wanted to know for each transaction type. Okay. What are the number of entries passed? So using the same function, I can do multiple types of analysis. Can I do it for subjected type? I can do. I can do for any character type. I can use classify. If the value is numeric, then I can apply summarize. Okay, now if you see here for each of the transaction type, it gives me, I want to see for which transaction type, what are the maximum number of entries. See, you have got the 101 BSR, there are 3,305 entries. This seems to be one favorite where a lot of entries are passed. It also gives me the total value. Okay, so if I am doing the audit, it helps me to focus on a specific area. For example, there is some account which is pertaining to expenses or pertaining to grants received or grant expenses. 
I can focus on that and pick up details. For example, I want details of these transactions. I just double click, I can extract only the transactions of that, and then I take in Excel and I can do the analysis as required. Okay, now this gives me the data for that particular entry. If I want in Excel, I just click here, it will be saved in Excel. Okay, let's close this. This I have told you this is possible. I do duplicates in cost category, is it possible? I got the cost category cost center. In tally, I know that I cannot enter transactions if there are duplicates. Okay, if there are duplicate cost category, I cannot create duplicate cost, cost center for duplicate cost category. What I would like to do is I want to identify whether there are duplicates. Identify duplicates. Oh, oh. I need to come to this. Ah, so you should select, it's important that you select the right sheet. Okay, I come here. Now what is that I want to do? I want to identify duplicates. See, you can identify unique, ID can remove duplicates. There are so many things I can do. I just want to show you one thing. How can I do this? For all the cost category, cost center, what is that I want? I wanted cost category and cost center. And in the display, I want only cost category and cost center. Okay. Now, I want summary. Otherwise, you give me all the data. This one. Let's see what happens here. What do you expect the result to be? For each cost category, it's able to be what the number of transactions which happened. So it means I know these are this is a cost center which is a duplicate. This cost center is a cost category blank. So it means at a glance I know these are places where they have got cost center. There are let's say 183 entries where they got cost center but cost category is not there. Always, always. I can go through the whole list and there's one that I can find out. Okay. Now I want to find out which are the unique entries cost category cost center. I can say identify for unique, so it will give me only the unique cost category and cost center. And then based on that I can decide what additional cost category cost center is to be added. Okay, let's now let's go to some other examples. Ah, this is interesting. This will combine with data analytics with Excel. And we'll see we, in the first in the first case, what we did was we did analysis. Now this this NGO has got both foreign currency transactions or not foreign currency transactions. Okay. And that is identified by the last identifier which is given in the FRM. Okay. Now if I go here, I want to pick up all transactions only of F. I just select. No, if I select here F. Now if you see here, I got all transactions which belong to F. Okay, I say okay. I got this data, I want to segregate this data and copy into a new sheet. How do I do that? Copy and paste. Instead of that, what I can do is here I can say extract visible cells. Only the visible cells. Let's say you have done a lot of analysis, filtering, so many things. Now you want to extract only the data and paste. Now you see it has created that particular thing. Now if you see here, this is extracted only that 5067 cells. Okay. Now this is not exactly what I want to show. Now I want to show you what is that I can do here in this case. Yeah, now let's come back to this. What I would like to do is, let's see, okay, we'll be, just do another three tests. These are important tests. What I want to do is, one is there's a trial balance. Uh, this actual case which happened from my friend, that now he, the auditor finished the audit. After this account had to pass entries and he sets a new trial balance. The auditor wants to verify what is the difference between the trial balance which I received earlier and now. Okay, is it possible through data analytics I can find out that? Okay, through VLOOKUP you can do circus and get that one. I'll show you how simple it is to do through data analytics. Other thing I also want to do was, now we found the debit and credit tally for all the transactions put together. Now the challenge is, between F and W has a past entries, which means one leg of the transaction is foreign currency, another is in non-foreign currency, we are not supposed to do. Can I, as an auditor, if I am doing the audit, can I find out that? Now when combined together, I found everything is tallied. Now I want to segregate. How do I do that? In this case, what I do is, <coughs> I use the same classifier, but I do a small thing. I will call it as, let's say, currency type. I am just going to use Excel itself here. In Excel, we got something called, what is that? I want to remove the last character. There is something called right. Okay, I pick up right. See, the best thing if you want to learn Excel, use this FX. When you use FX, the command comes. What is that I want to do? I want to pick up this particular cell, cost center, 
Okay, number of characters I want to pick is one. Okay. Now I say okay. Now something went blank. So that's where the right is. No, no, I think I so you need a pickup. Ah, no, I have to pick. No, no, I have to. I have to ah, This is what I have to pick up. Okay, transaction type. I come back here again. What are I can just tell you the cell number? What is the cell number? D. D. This is D. Yeah. Okay, so here I just go and change it to D2. Done? So in Excel, what do I do if I have to copy? <coughs> now, this copies all the transactions, F and M. Okay, now this is where the power data analytics is. Now, if I apply the filter, now you see the magic here. You got F and you also got S. What is this? S is not supposed to be there. Okay, let's see what is S. So here you got two entries which are belong to S. So you got one not one BS. Now based on because I already done the analysis, no, it's not BSF here given it BS. Now how did the system allow? We don't know. So this is an error we found. Okay. Now this is not what I want to show you. What I want to show you was now based on this, without doing anything, I should be able to find out whether the debit and credit tally for each type of a transaction. And if you pass that, I want to know which part, part, part of the transaction is F, which part of the transaction is in L, N. Okay. Can you go through Excel? If one is an expert in Excel, maybe in 10 minutes he will figure out what to do with the multiple ways. Okay. Because one thing is sure, anything is possible in Excel. Either through the function or through the macro. But the only thing is the time. Do you have the time? Okay. Now I am going to use the same function. I come to ECAD. Okay. What I want to focus is the technique. What are the data analytic techniques you can use? And you can use it in multiple ways. Okay, you should know how to use. What is that I want to do? Now you should tell me, you should guide me what I should do. What is that I want to total? I want to total based on what? Based on voucher number. Okay, for each voucher number I want to total. And then I want to total the amount. That's right. Now in this, I want to group by what? Group by the currency type. Okay, and then after that I have to just say what? I have to just say okay. <coughs> now let's see the magic and see whether we are able to find out what the transactions and where there is a difference. So this should be able to give me for each type of a transaction, whether F or this one, for each voucher type, voucher number, it will tell me this is F, this is N. Is it done? No, no, it's not finished. 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 No, it's what do I have to find if there is a difference? If there is a difference, this should be what? Not equal to 0. No, this is a percentage. I want to go to the not equal to 0. This tells me what are the transactions where the debit and the credit doesn't tell. Now, if you see here, one leg is in F, another is in F. Now, here also if you see, this part is in F and another one is in S. So here we got blank, we don't know what has happened. And here again you see. So at one glance I am going to know what are the transactions which are passed in F and L. Then I can directly go and attack those particular entries. There are about 29 entries. Some of the blanks also have come. But I know exactly there may be about 20, 25 entries. Where the problem is there, I can sit with the accountant and resolve it. Now if I was doing it through Excel, can I do this? It might have been possible but it would have taken a long time. So let me do one. Uh, last test. <coughs> no, the two tests. I think I will pick up two. Okay, one is the trial balance. I also want to show you one that the C form comparison. Okay, let's pick up this trial balance. Okay, now I got this trial balance. This is what I told you. This is the TV world with the, which was auditor uh, staff had verified everything and based on that they got this particular thing. And now you also got this. Now this is a software, I will not give the name of the software, this is not tally with another software from which they exported the data and they got the data like this. Okay. Now this is the latest trial balance. Now if you look at the number of entries, 
the 347 here. In this case, if you see there are 345 entries. Okay. So it means there are two entries. It's not just in a ledger number. Could possible some have been deleted, some have been deleted. Now if I go here, now here this includes the group total also. For that we have done some analysis. I just go and select only the ledger name. Now I got the ledger name, there are 272 ledgers. Here I come to this, this one and I do the same thing. Okay, here I select the ledger name. Okay, now here, here I got 274, that's all, there are two entries. Okay, now you look at the closing debit, just look at the closing debit, 750, 67, 227. Here also 567. Now if you come here, if I look at the closing credit, it's 7568827. So it means there are some transactional differences. Okay. I want to find out the difference between the two. How do I find out? One is through VLOOKUP, I can do analysis based on that particular thing. No, I don't have time to do the lookup as we look up without that I should be able to do. So in that case, what do, what do we do? So I go to ECAT and then I have a function called analysis. Compare, I want to go to compare files. So, what do I want to compare? I want to compare, you should be clear about what you are comparing. There are two sheets. First one is this, second sheet is this. Okay. Now, what is the column I want to compare? Can you tell me? <coughs> it's the name. Clear? Now, there is a problem here because the second sheet is not coming. Okay. Let's see what are the reasons. Okay, so if you see the last list, this one name, here it given us group. The, it's important when you want to compare, the column name should be same. Okay, we save it. Okay, now I come back here. Where were we? I come to analysis. Comparative files. Now I just want to tell you so far, did you find any difficulty in understanding how the software works? I'm just doing a demo of one software. There are many software which will work in the same way. Okay, I select the second sheet. See now immediately when tallies you will give you the folder. What is the amount to compare? Name. Okay. Now what is the demo? I want to open this one. I want to focus on the closing debit. I'm not bothered with this one. I select the closing debit and the closing credit. This is what I selected and I want to find the difference. Difference closing debit and closing debit. Difference, closing credit, closing credit, difference. This is what I want to find. Okay. Now it should be able to go through all the 347 rows or about 10,000 rows, whatever number of rows is there. You should be able to make a comparison and tell me which are the rows where there is a difference. Let's see the result and then get an idea how the result comes. The same way C form compares also, I am not sure. C form also compares in the same way. I got the totals from the GM, I got the totals from this one. Now, tell me now that you got this information, this is the count based on the, for each of the name of the ledger, it tells me how many times it has come. So in this case, ledger name is supposed to come only once, so we know there is no difference. We are focusing on what? This particular area, what? Difference. <coughs> so here, I want to find out which are the accounts where there is not equal to zero. See, these are the four letter name where the transactions have been passed. Okay. Now it would also be possible because I took the first letter as a base, it could be possible it's coming other vice versa also. So in that case, what I can also do is I can say here what are the accounts which are not equal to this one. So I find the differences. Okay. So this is how I can actually compare what will be the number of transactions. I can do a quick data analysis based on this. Okay. So if you remember, if you go back, okay, now this is what we said. We can split the negative and positive into two columns. I think there is a simple function where what a column I got, one column is there. I can split into two columns, negative and position. Verify the debit credit tally for each voucher number. This we already done. This we can also do. How can I do this? Can you tell me? I just use the same classic function for the voucher number and sum is equal to Zero, not equal to zero means it is not tallying. Now I want to create a link of the files. All this work I have done. I want to create a link of the files. 
as a part of my documentation, I just go here and I say I want to create an index sheet. For all the analysis, what are done, what are new sheets are created, it creates an index sheet with the link. I can directly go to the particular sheet. Not only that, you can create this link even for the folder. So you create all the 14 files, everything you put in the folder, you want to create a link, you can create through this particular test. Now I want to go to the audit test, I can go to the audit test. Okay, this is how we can do the you can also optimize the data like that. There are multiple things you can do. Compare, let's see, we have done. Okay. Now let me come back to the presentation. There are two points which I want to communicate. Are you able to see? Yes. Okay. So, what is data analytics all about? All the data is available in our In fact, they say now we are flooded with data but starving for information. As CDS we should know how to harness the power of the data and convert this to information which is useful for the management or which is useful for that. For that it's important we should know how to apply thought to data and this data analytics is all about. How we can apply thinking to that particular data. Anybody can see and get their information but clicking correctly, selecting the right data and drawing inference from that, that is what is most important. Now this where I wanted to give some example of form 3 CA, we don't have the time. So if you look at even form 3 CA, what information you want, you can extract whether study or anything. So what is next in data analytics? In data analytics if you want, what is important is we need to develop critical thinking. With most of us CAs, we know we already have. Now we need to apply critical thinking to information technology and the data. Narsimhan Mani was talking about mindset. Okay, he said mindset, skill set and tool set. Now these are two, three useful sets. We know if you want to use data analytics, First thing it starts from the mind. Okay, then we can develop the skills using the tools which are available. There are plenty of tools available, there are no dearth of tools. What I gave you is an example of one example, one particular tool. The future depends on what you do today. That's what you need to remember. Now I just wanted to see, tell you what is that you see here? Ah, do you see the what do you see first? Ah, you see the box glass? Yeah, we see the glass and then after that, uh, now the question is two people. Now the question is what perspective? Which did you see first? That shows the perspective which you generally look at. And whether you stuck with only one, are you able to see two? Now, if, if you apply to data analytics, management sees data from one perspective. As a auditor, we bring a different perspective, and that's what is most critical. <coughs> so, I remember we we'll close it. Ramdev said, no? Baba Ramdev says, Karne se hota hai. Yoga, karne se hota hai. It means what? If you want to learn yoga, you have to do it. So, similarly, data analytics. Sikhne se hota hai. Okay? Or karne se hota hai. So, only when you karte hai. It means what? You start doing it, you learn it. So, there is no doubt. The only thing is you have to take a decision. Yes, I'll master data analytics. For example, the data analytics techniques I showed you, if you give any of your staff problem, one hour I can train them on this. And they can be maybe 50 percent, 60 percent productive than what they are doing. So if you spend about 60, uh, six, uh, let's say about six hours one day training, uh, you can enhance your productivity with more than 200 percent. It doesn't require anything. And, but the important thing is whether you let your staff learn it or you will learn it. Because if you are able to learn it, then you can train your staff and say this is how you can do. Okay. So I started with the objective that I will give you some practical demo of how data analytics could be used. I hope Babu Jandran is happy with this presentation. So thank you very much. <laughs>